Hello my dear students welcome to Cinema Academy YouTube channel where we bring for you every day a new problem in the art of problem solving especially beneficial for the students who are preparing for JE main and JE advanced exams so what have we got for you in today's art of problem solving so in today's question we basically are again dealing with a permutation and combination question so the question reads like this how many distinct parallelograms can be formed in an equilateral triangle of side length n filled with n square equilateral triangles of side length one each one such parallelogram is shown in the figure below in blue color so guys and girls as you can see very clearly in your diagram that there is an equilateral triangle okay so the big triangle that you see is an equilateral triangle of side length n and it has been filled up with equilateral triangles of side length one each now why does the question set us say that there are n square equilateral triangles See guys and girls very simple if you see in row number one there is one equilateral triangle in row number two there are three equilateral triangles in row number three there will be five equilateral triangles in row number four there will be seven equilateral triangles and so on and so forth so when you add these numbers one plus three plus five plus seven let's say for n terms Basically, what are you finding? You're finding the sum of an arithmetic progression whose first term is one, common difference is two, and you're summing this arithmetic progression, or so as to say arithmetic series, for n terms. So the answer for this will be n by two, two a plus n minus one into the common difference, which clearly boils down to n by two, two plus two n minus two. So two and two gets canceled, and you have n by 2 times 2n, even this 2 and this 2 will stand cancelled, giving you n squared. That's why the question setter says that there are n square equilateral triangles that are filled within this bigger equilateral triangle. Okay, now moving on. That's not my question actually. My question is to count the number of distinct parallelograms that can be formed in this entire structure. All right, guys. So now what I want you to understand is the question can easily be solved by understanding few things. Number one, any parallelogram that you choose within this structure will fall under three categories. So what are these categories? Number one, the parallelogram will have sides parallel to any of the two sides of this bigger equilateral triangle. For example, the blue parallelogram that you see within this structure has got its sides parallel to AB. So as you can see, this side is parallel to AB and this side is parallel to AC. Correct? So likewise, we can say another category could be a parallelogram whose sides are parallel to AB and BC. Right? So you can have a parallelogram whose sides is parallel to a, B, and B, C. Something of this nature. Something of this nature. Correct? So here you can see the sides are parallel to A, B, and B, C. And the third category is where the side is parallel to A, C, and B, C. Something of this nature. Right? So you can see here this parallelogram, which I have shown with a highlighter, is basically having its sides parallel to BC and AC. All right. Now, my viewers must appreciate that the total count of the number of parallelograms that will fall under each of these three categories would be the same. Yes, my dear students. The number of parallelograms which will fall under case one will be same as the number of parallelograms which will fall under case two will be the same as that which will fall under case three. So the, the parallelograms that you will be counting under case one and the parallelograms that you will be counting under case two and the parallelograms that you will be counting under case three, they will all be equal, right? So it is sufficient for us to just count one of the cases because if we count one of the cases, we can just multiply it with three and get our total answer. All right, so let us target, let us target the case one first because if we target one of the cases the other case are automatically addressed okay now this problem can very easily be solved if you realize one more thing my dear students let us say i decide to extend this side length okay so let's say i decide to extend the side length a b i decide to also extend the side length a c
Okay. All right. So let me write a C here because I erase it. Okay. And let me add one more row to this. Let's add one more row to this. All right. And now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to extend my mesh to add one more set of triangles down there. Yes. So as you can see, I'm extending the mesh to add one more set of triangles down there. There you go, my friends. Now, this last row, if you see here, that last row will have got n plus two such points over here, okay? As you can see, this will be my n plus one -th row, and this last row will have n plus two points over here, right? So there will be a total of n plus two points in the last row. So these counts will be having, there will be n plus two points there. Now guys and girls, I want you to understand one simple thing. If I take a case of such a parallelogram, which is having side parallel to AB and AC, and let us say I extend the side length, which I'm showing with a green color. So let's say if I extend this side length, you would realize that on extension of that side length, it will come to this point. Okay. And let's say I extend this side length of the parallelogram, as you can see on the figure, it will meet over here. So as you can see, one of the points is here, one of the point is here. Okay. Similarly, if I extend this side of the parallelogram, Okay, so that point will actually meet on this point on the last row. And similarly, if I extend this forward, that will meet over here. So basically what I see is that the parallelogram corresponding to the one which I had shown earlier is corresponding to four points chosen from those n plus two points down in the last line which you see in the figure, right? So these four points, these four points, the one which I'm putting a stick mark on, the one which I'm putting a tick mark on, they basically are the ones which correspond to that given parallelogram. And my dear friends, every parallelogram that you are going to pick up, whose side is going to be parallel to AC and AB, will have four points corresponding to it on the last line that you see in the figure. So what does it mean? It means that the number of parallelograms that you're going to get from here is going to be n plus 2c4. Yes, my dear friends. So out of these n plus 2 points, if you choose any four points, it will correspond to one parallelogram, which is basically having its sides parallel to a, b and a, c. Right. So may I say all of these will correspond to the same number. So this will also be n plus 2c4 and this will also be n plus 2c4. Right. So the total number of parallelograms, the total number of parallelograms that you will end up getting, my dear students, is going to be three times n plus 2c4. So this problem is solved. So it was a question which was slightly tricky, but with proper logic and reasoning, you can easily crack such a problem. So this is the answer to this question. Thank you so much for watching. Be safe and be healthy.